What's up, boy? It's your homeboy, Kitsakwal, and your bitch ass up with another video. Hope you had some good motherfucking holidays over the weekend. If you're out here in America, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you got your grub on, got your drink on, got your smoke on, whatever the fuck it is you do. I hope you did it to the fullest. Welcome the fuck back. As you know, over the holiday weekend, if you haven't heard, sad news to tell you bitch ass motherfuckers. Hector Camacho was shot. And he died on November 24th over the holidays. He's now the late, great Hector Camacho, uh, one of the all-time great Puerto Rican fighters. Uh, leaves behind a great legacy. Uh, he's one of the fastest fighters of all time. He's a former three-division world champion. Outspoken, charismatic, uh, just a great fighter. Some of the things he did uh, later on in his career and after his retirement, uh, you know, being involved with drugs and being arrested, someone t taint his his legacy and his career. But I mean, no one can deny the the things that he accomplished and the talent that he showed inside the ring. So without further motherfucking ado, this is the life and death of Hector Camacho. Hector Macho Camacho was born on May 24, 1962 in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Although born in Puerto Rico, as a child his family moved to America. They moved to the James Weldon Housing Project in Spanish Harlem. Uh, as a kid and as a teenager, living in America, Hector Camacho soon, soon started uh, hanging out in the streets a lot. And uh, the first time he was ever arrested was as a teen. Although it was it was around this time where he began falling in love with the sport of boxing, began uh, getting very dedicated to the sport, and as an amateur, he became a three-time New York Golden Gloves champion. Camacho decided to step up his game and go pro. And on September 12, 1980, Hector Macho Camacho made his pro debut versus David Brown, winning on points. As time went by, Camacho started moving up the ranks and moving up in weight as he was now fighting at 130 pounds. Started his career at 126. Uh, even called out Salvador Sanchez early in his career saying he would beat Salvador Sanchez. Unfortunately, as you may know uh, or not know, you know Salvador Sanchez died in, in a tragic car accident and unfortunately that fight was never made. But on August 7th, 1983, Hector Macho Camacho Fought in his first title fight for the 130 pound WBC title versus Rafael Limon. Again, you saw the lightning quick speed that Hector Camacho possessed. He was a slick left handed fighter, solid defense, great footwork, and you know, he just he just blasted Limon out the fucking water, you know, knocked him down a couple times en route to a fifth round TKO winning his first world championship. Fought at this division for a while. And on August 10th, 1985, he fought for the 135 WBC lightweight title versus Jose Luis Ramirez. Very easy fight for him again, displaying his great boxing ability, great speed, solid defense, fighter that was hard to hit, could land on you in combinations, could frustrate you, could fight brawlers and, and boxers, and went on to win an easy decision versus also Luis Ramirez. Fought at this division for several years. Probably uh, this was the division in, in which he was the best in, probably one of the best 135 pounders of, of all time. It, that, that point can be argued. And uh, another major fight that he had uh, was when he won his title in a, in a third division. It was on February 3rd, 1990, when he won the 140-pound WBO belt versus Ray Mancini. Of course, Ray Boom Boom Mancini is a Hall of Fame fighter. Great fight. This was a fight that, that uh, was talked about for... For years and it had finally went down and Hector Camacho did his thing, racked up a great win on his resume 
You know, he beat uh, Ray Boom Boom Mancini and acquired the 140-pound WBO belt. This was Hector Macho Camacho's third divisional championship. And Hector Camacho had, you know, several big fights, but if I covered all his fights, you know, this would be a long-ass motherfucking video. So I'm just trying to cover, you know, the, the, the highlights of his career. You know, these were championship fights uh, that solidified his legacy. Another fight that was notable in his career was his first loss. His first career loss came on February 23rd, 1991 to Greg Hagen. Uh, this was somewhat of a bullshit decision. A lot of controversy in this fight. Uh, at this point in Hector Macho Camacho's career, you could see that uh, he was no longer in his prime. You know, a, a lot of the uh, lightning quick uh, speed that he had, the motor skills and reflexes, you could see that they were somewhat diminished. He still had flashes of brilliance in this fight, uh, but it wasn't as consistent as, as it was when he was in his prime. Uh, in my opinion, I thought he won a close decision. He was able to pull off a, a, another victory. Uh, but he ended up losing, uh, I believe, by one point on one of the judges' scorecards and by two points on the other. Uh, he, he won on on the third uh, judges' scorecard. Uh, it should be noted that a lot of the controversy from this fight came because the referee uh, took a point from Hector Camacho in the final round of this fight uh, because Camacho had refused uh, to touch gloves with Greg Hogan. Uh, this is bullshit in a lot of ways because... You know, that, that decision uh, that the referee made ended up costing uh, Hector Macho Camacho the fight, and this was his first career loss. Camacho was able to avenge this loss, however, versus Greg Hagen, and he retained his WBO 140-pound title in a rematch winning by decision. Clear decision. Uh, the fight that most uh, casual boxing fans uh, remember... Hector Macho Camacho for is his fight versus Julio Cesar Chavez in 1991. Uh, this was a fight that he lost uh, by clear decision. Uh, as a Mexican, you know, you you, you 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 were rooting for Chavez and it was a great victory in the Mexico versus Puerto Rican rivalry. You know, there's a big rivalry going on there. It's been going on for years now. And, you know, it, it was good for that. But you also have to recognize that Hector Macho Camacho was no longer the same fighter that he that he once was at that point in his career when he fought Chavez, and uh, it would have been a much more exciting fight if uh, both fighters were were in their prime. And uh, after after that point, you know Hector Hector Macho Camacho was still involved in big fights, but he was no longer in his prime, and he has a lot of big names on his resume. Uh, after this point in his career, uh, where he either was no longer in his prime or the person that he was fighting was no longer in their prime either. Uh, as shown in his 1994 fight versus Trinidad in which he lost by decision. Uh, the two fights that he had with Roberto Duran in 96, he of course had two victories over Duran. But, you know, Roberto Duran was nowhere near the fighter that he once was. Uh, that fight would have been great at 135 pounds. You know, both all-time great 135 pound, you know, lightweight uh, fighters. It would have been great to see them in their prime. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, we saw them uh, when they both uh, were just shells uh, of their former selves. Uh, he fought De La Hoya in 97, lost another decision, and uh, just kept on fighting. I mean, he had a fight in 2009 versus Yori Boy Campas. Uh, but, you know, Camacho has a, a lot of names on his resume. You know, he even knocked out Sugar Ray Leonard later on in his career. Uh, he beat Vinny Paz. Uh, he, he even beat Freddie Roach, who right now is one of the best uh, trainers of his generation. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there were other issues going on in Hector Camacho's, Camacho's life. Uh, as you saw with his arrest in 2005 when he was arrested for burglary. Burglarized in electronic store and some <laughs> way out shit, you know what I'm saying? Arrested in 2011 uh, for uh, beating the shit out of uh, one of his sons. And uh, he was still going to court for that. And uh, on November 20th, 2012, he was in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Uh, he was 
in the passenger seat with his longtime friend, in the car of his longtime friend, Adrian Mojica Moreno, uh, when they were suddenly attacked by uh, unknown gunmen who began shooting at their uh, at their Mustang. Camacho was struck once in the jaw. Uh, that bullet uh, went ahead and passed through his jaw and also struck uh, his vertebrae and uh, ended up lodged in, inside his shoulder. Camacho was taken to San Pablo Hospital. It was first reported that he was in critical condition, although he was stable. And doctors uh, had said that he was going to make a full recovery. That's, that's what they were expecting. Unfortunately, that night, uh, he suffered cardiac arrest, and uh, due to that cardiac arrest, uh, he pretty much went brain dead. Uh, I believe it was on November 23rd that uh, doctors officially announced that uh, Camacho was now clinically brain dead, and his family had to make the decision to uh, take him off life support. On November 24th, 2012, his, uh, his family made that decision and took him off life support and shortly after Hector Camacho died and it was the death of a great Puerto Rican champion. And the boxing world has lost another great with the passing of Hector Macho Camacho. As I've said, he leaves behind a long legacy. Not only the things that he did inside the ring, but one of the things that made Camacho stand out was like I said, he was very charismatic, outspoken, knew how to sell a fight. Even later in his career when he fought De La Hoya, Trinidad, a lot of that hype generated from that fight was, you know, the shit that he was talking. You know, as I said, with the drug problems that he faced in his, in his, throughout his life, that did fuck up his image a little bit. And, you know, drugs were found inside the car in uh, his friend's possession uh, when Camacho was shot. And a lot of people have, you know, uh, down Camacho for that. But, you know, people should always remember all the great things that he accomplished in the ring. And that's how I choose to remember Hector Macho Camacho. And, you know, he just seemed like he was just real, a, a, real, a real person, you know. Nothing was fake or fabricated about who he was, you know, whether it was, it was for better or worse, you know. So uh, i just like to say rest in peace to Hector Macho Camacho. And uh, one more time being said, you know, dedication for him. It's macho time. If you like this shit, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. This is your homeboy, Getsakwala. Sign the fuck on out.